So to give you a better understanding of what I'm actually doing and working on and what the situation here really looks like is I'm going to uh, give you a better explanation right now. So what we're doing is we are basically building the bathroom out of an old building. Now it's important to understand that these are actually well basically two walls the wall here you're looking at and that terminates here in this corner and you see that that wall is not attached to this wall over here and that is because this wall over here belongs to the property of our neighbor so when they have built this, this little house, they did not want to attach it to the property of the neighbor. Now I'm going to continue with that. I am not going to uh, attach anything to the property of our neighbor. Further, this, is, this building consists basically of two walls. So the wall you're looking at, and then I'll take you around. So that is basically one wall that has a connection here to a wall that is sort of built against uh, possibly attached to the big house that's basically all it is so when we look on the inside that is the wall we were looking at from the outside now this inner wall here is just a brick wall just as we had on the top, which you have seen me pulling down, that is just a brick wall. And then this is basically just the wall from the big house. So the whole bathroom building consists of a fairly weak brick wall that is not attached to our neighbor's property. And then the wall that they have purposely built to make this an enclosed space now you understand that the strength in a building when you have four walls connected to each other say like a, a ring frame that is a a, a strong uh, connection right a strong a strong uh, form shape this is not really a strong shape because it's basically just a loose standing wall and therefore i have also decided on building this stone wall here because this stone wall gives lateral support to the wall of the building it's not set in the middle of the wall of the building but at least at one side it's giving lateral support meaning that the wall from the bathroom building can't move tip over in that direction so coming back onto the terrace you see that this stone wall, that, that's stone and, and concrete and are filled up with rubble, that's giving quite a bit of support to that sort of freestanding wall over there. Now, what I'm going to do after I have finished this wall, and this wall is going to uh, become wider because I'm going to uh, encapsulate the wooden original wall. It's gonna be, yeah, a proper proper stone wall a little bit higher up we can put flower pots on there or so and then after that i am going to build a stone concrete platform stairs down in this corner so that this path where i'm on can lead us via the staircase the stone staircase onto the flat roof and Behind the flat roof, there will be large opening doors leading into the master bedroom. That door opening that's there now will be closed and sort of in the middle will come some large opening doors. Um, so what I've got to do now is finish this wall, build that staircase so that I have easier access onto the flat roof. I've got to remove part of that wall in order to install the doors the large opening doors fill up the little the hole where that, that existing door is and then i've got to build 
the new roof. Now, the new roof will consist of, of new beams, plenty, to support the weight of a concrete flat roof. On top of the beams, OSB boards. On top of that, insulation foam. And on top of that, steel reinforced concrete. About two inches, I think, will be plenty. So I want to have the concrete all the way coming from here, this wall, into the main house on top of the wall of the main house and anchor it in there so that the flat roof the concrete slab is basically attached into the main house and all the way over this um, structure here these buildings tying everything together so that that will create a very strong um, st uh, strong construction basically so um, I have to continue building this wall, finishing this wall, and then I'm going to build up there the uh, the stone staircase. I am going to uh, build it out of uh, parpangs, these concrete blocks, because it just saves me a lot of time and a lot of money, and it will be lighter than just concrete, poured concrete, and I'm going to clad the wall that's belonging to the neighbors neighbor's property with some thin OSB or some thin wooden board in order to uh, prevent the cement and concrete sticking to their property so it will still be you know not attached to their property yeah so let's get back onto the wall Is it gonna work? Looks pretty okay. I think tomorrow we can get to the level of the rest of the garden on both sides and then hopefully the day after we can put 
the top on. Yeah, so uh, here I've used uh, forms to build the stones against. I was planning that on the other side as well, but I didn't re really have a um, place to uh, secure the OSB plates in place. So most of that side of the wall, I've just stapled rock on rock. But uh, this is easier working. I mean, the way I'm building it, I'm, I'm not building a stone wall. I'm building a concrete wall cladded with stone, basically. The, the stones are encapsulated. It's not like these walls from, from the house where it's literally stone on stone with a layer of cement mortar in between. Um, that's not what we do because I wouldn't have enough stone and also that's that's quite a skill. I, I'm, I think I could pull it off but uh, it's, it's quite a lot of work, backbreaking work. So yeah this is basically uh, a concrete wall with uh, a stone encapsulated cladding. These natural stones, they don't provide any strength to the wall. So, <clears throat> I would like this wall to be as high as this point here. That's the, 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 the wooden uh, level uh, on the length of the upper terrace. And I want to keep it about as that high all the way. Now how am I going to make sure that I'm not going over or under? I have a uh, spirit level but that's, that's not long enough to indicate on this side how high I need to be. So for that I use a, uh, a laser line, a laser level gauge. And I've got three label, laser level gauges. Um, I actually I got one for free last year and I did a uh, review on that and this year I've got another one that was also kindly donated. In fact there were quite a few manufacturers of laser levels that wanted uh, me to review their products but as I already have three and I have already done one last year a review um, I was not too keen but there was one company Lasgu that was uh, pretty persistent and emailed me over and over and over so I said well okay that's uh, let's do this because uh, I need a laser level anyway for this building so it's it's maybe uh, yeah good opportunity to uh, review another product so it's the Lesgu laser level let's have a look uh, see what it's like Okay. Oh, that's nice. Is that a rechargeable one? Yes, it is. And I love rechargeable. Oh, wow. Oh, you have an indicator, a battery indicator. That's great. I, I hate mucking about with little loose batteries. Okay, so that's the on off button that also locks the pendulum inside for traveling. Ah, tripod mount. Oh, and a second battery as well. Ooh, that is pretty cool. That is really cool. You never run out of battery. And the charging cable, like we don't have enough of these. And then it's a mount. I'm sure. Okay. Micro adjustments. Oh, it's probably a magnetic mount. That's also cool. And yeah. The detection plate, laser target, as you get with all of them. And a little manual, and we never read the manual, because we're man. Ah, cool, okay. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to use that. Okay, so it's blinking and that means that I need to level it more. And then I will, I think, self-level at 7 degrees. Ah yeah, so with uh, the modes it will... With the different modes it will select which laser line you're using. Uh, all three, or just one of them, or two of them. And then there's another function, there's several functions on them, but uh, I'll figure that out later. I just want to see how I'm doing here. I don't know whether the camera registers it, but there's a green laser line. And you know what, I should have done this. I should have done this a few hours earlier before the sun got into this corner here. Yeah. That's a mark where the laser line is. Now, there's two, two ways you can do it, right? You can either lower or higher the laser level on the tripod to reach exactly this point. Or you can just measure the distance. If I catch the laser line here, oh, and I have it, I can see it when I hold my hand against the sunlight. If, if there was a line too high, the laser line was too high, higher than the point where I want to be, then I could just measure the distance and use that distance all over, right, to get eventually the same the same height say the laser line would end up here at 20 centimeter too high then I would also have the laser line on the other side at 20 centimeter too high so I would just see line up the laser line with the 20 centimeter and then draw a mark there but in fact the laser line is exactly where I want to have it purely by luck <laughs> So, now I gotta find it here, and that's a lot easier because this is still in the shade, and I can see the line here. So I'm now just drawing the line, or indicating the line, where the line is. Okay, well this project it's not uh, it's not about total accuracy. You know, we don't want to have things super straight and super accurate because it's it's not in the style of 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 the property that we have and that we want, but uh, this at least gives me an indication how far up I should come with my wall. So well, that was a good use of um, a laser line. Ah, so far so good boy. Let's go. Well, I'll be using it a lot more in this project. I'm not sure whether this one will outperform the other ones that I have. Um, I think the price was really reasonable. We'll have to look that up. But uh, the two rechargeable batteries with a USB charging cable, that's definitely a big, big plus. Don't walk on the wet cement. Hey, hey. Don't walk on the wet cement, idiot. Benji, don't walk on the wet cement. Hey, hey, what did I tell you? Hey, hey, don't walk on the wet cement. So now that we are 
done for today with the wall, I'm going to uh, deposit a foundation for the stairs. So I've lined the walls that belong to our neighbor's property with some uh, well cardboard like wood, uh, an old backing from an old uh, cupboard we bought earlier this year and some uh, yeah of those cardboard type uh, wood panels that I can sacrifice for this job. I've installed reinforcement, steel reinforcement. I'm still going to uh, drop in more reinforcement later on. And uh, yeah, I think we can start depositing uh, concrete in here, about 10 centimeter, it's four inches. That should be sufficient to, uh, to create a nice foundation for the stairs that are going to be built up here in this corner. I wasn't really able to film it because uh, my hands are really dirty and I really had to hurry up uh, to deposit all the concrete in there without the first batch drying out. So, but uh, yeah, I've got uh, yeah, a good 10 centimeters, four inches of concrete in there. I've got double layers of reinforcement in the bottom and on the top. I uh, just, because I want to be sure, I am not 100% sure of this underground. So I just want this slab to be strong. I tapped it a lot to, I don't have uh, the vibrator. Um, the concrete vibrator, but uh, I tapped it quite a lot and uh, yeah, I think this is gonna work out fine. Now we'll see tomorrow huh, when it's uh, sort of set and I can pull the forms off. Tomorrow is gonna be exciting because that form will come off and then these forms here will come off and we're starting to uh, yeah, make the wall look a little bit uh, prettier. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be exciting tomorrow. Don't walk in the wet cement. Hey, hey, it's wet. Can you, can't you feel it? You're walking in wet cement. You're walking in wet cement, hey, hey. Ah, oh, Benji! So for now I'm done with the wall, still would want to render it, just like I did with the uh, couch, uh, reclining wall, fire pit surrounding, but uh, for the rendering I would like to use the old render that will come off that wall over there once we start breaking that open in order to install the large opening doors. So coming weeks I'm going to open up that wall recycle the show the lime render and use that for the rendering of unfortunately i can't finish the stairs that i had planned to this is because my van broke down this morning it's at the mechanic it's going to be repaired over the coming three days so i can't hold the power banks the concrete blocks that i uh, need to create uh, the staircase also for next week I would like to uh, thank you for watching all the way to the end for 
liking, for subscribing, and a very, very special thanks to the people who have donated us a coffee. That really helps us uh, keeping the channel alive. If you're also interested in uh, buying us a coffee, then please see the link below or the link in the description of this video. Then the only thing that uh, I need to uh, discuss with you is uh, my review on the uh, automatic chicken coop opening doors. Oh, how do I say that? The automatic doors behind me. Uh, I've been using them now for a week, a week minus one day. And uh, it is one of those little gadgets that has really changed my life in a positive way because I don't have to get up at sunrise. I don't have to go out at sunset. Um, it's just been phenomenal. I can uh, go away for a weekend. Um, soon I will go to uh, back to Holland for a week and the caretaker who's looking after the chicken will only have to come once a day to check on feed, etc. He won't have to come twice a day to open and close the gate for the chicks. So I'm, I'm really, really, really happy with that uh, opening door. I was already planning to buy one. I did my research online um, looking at various brands. I had not seen the Chick Cozy brand, but uh, I'm super, super happy with them. It has been working flawlessly. It's set on time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about it. It's, uh, the product was ready to use straight out of the packaging. I only had to cut the hole for the chicks to go in and out. I had to uh, screw six screws in the wood. I had to install the batteries that were in the package, Duracell batteries, quality batteries. The manual is just flawless English, not Chinglish, which is just uh, unique at this point in time. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I couldn't be happier. I could not be happier. So uh, I got this one for free. Um, Chick Cozy has also given me a link, an affiliate link it's called, that I can place uh, um, with this video you can order one and then i would get uh, a commission on each sale i'm not doing that i'm not doing that because um, i don't need to earn on the sale of the chico z opening door i'm very happy to promote it because i'm super happy with it and uh, this also sort of proves my independent objective opinion maybe i'll place a link straight to the website and you can order yourself one if you're interested they have a few products, uh, but I'm definitely uh, interested in the chicken coop heater uh, from them, which I will use in the winter, I think. So, yeah, well, that's it from me for now. Next week is the 50th episode, and I'm planning on doing a little review. Uh, 50 weeks of working, basically, on this house, and I'm planning on uh, doing uh, an episode, uh, a before and after kind of episode. So, yeah. Hope to see you then. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next week. Bye now.